One of the things about the uh, the movie that's very very important is the the sounds of people's voices, and I know that you'd had people oh, listen well, to recordings of Franklin uh, Roosevelt, Roosevelt and Alice Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt's yes. daughter, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That that recording of Whitman reciting America. Yes, ample the ample street. Ample uh, at the end of the nineteenth uh, century, there is some research material mm -hmm. for pronunciation. Mm -hmm. They aren't speaking um, with a British accent. They're the children of England. Uh, it was a country still defining itself. Yes. A culture, I should say, defining it, finding itself. Mm -hmm. It's a culture coming together. Yeah, and that, and then part of the weave of the movie is Joan Woodward's narration. Oh, that she really is oh, the Joan voice. Joan Woodward of is so great. Yeah, Edith Wharton. Well, she is. Yes, and it, there was some. It was actually kind of sweet. Actually, some of the studio guys, they were so supporting the film. It was amazing. Mark Canton and all those guys at Columbia, but they did ask. Who was speaking? And I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. Somebody's telling me a story. I don't understand. Yeah. So why is it a woman? I never thought of that. Well, first of all, it's written by a woman. It seemed kind of odd to have a man's voice to it. No one could ever be jealous of May's triumphs. She managed to give the feeling that she would have been just as serene without them. I happen to like narration. Not just for narrative purposes, but no, for no, the No, no, it's really the feel of it, and it's really tone and atmosphere. And in the case of the Edith Wharton, I like the language, I like the use of words. There are some books that you read where you really feel nourished by reading a page or a sentence. Yeah. And I wanted to have that along with the visual. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if we get back into whether a novel could be made into a film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even want to get into that. But like, it's something different. Yeah. But why couldn't we have a taste of that? Why yeah. couldn't we have a taste of what it sounds like when you read mm -hmm. aloud? I don't know. I'm just, it just seems to me that the words are beautiful. There are also things cinematically that feel like they grow right out of the novel. And I was thinking, for instance, of the way at the opening ball that the camera keeps slowing down, um, that the speed slows down in the middle of the shot. And I remember the film is shot on Super 35 um, yeah. to give you more leeway with the lenses. The lenses, and also at that time we were able to uh, change the speed of the camera very easily. Yeah. There was a new device that was created, the Arri, yeah. and we were able to do that, so we played with it a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was trying to find a different visual expression of that world in that time. This was a world balanced so precariously that its harmony could be shattered by a whisper. 